Hey twelves, um, hope you're doing good, man. Um, today, um, we are going to be focusing on the on vital concept, um, and the climate change, um, associated weather conditions in Southern Africa as well. Um, so these terms that we are going to be discussing today are the very important terms. Okay yes to know and to understand so that you can be able to give definitions um to be able to answer effectively in your multiple choice questions and so on S uh, tables as well okay yes column a and column b matching um yes sentences with the right terms um please don't forget to subscribe um please 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 don't forget to subscribe guys please subscribe subscribe click the the red button please subscribe guys okay so the very first um term or concept that we're going to be talking about it's anapatic winds so what are anapatic winds these are the warm winds that blow up a valley during the during the day okay yes so during the day the sun hits the earth surface the earth surface gets warmer okay yes so you know the warm air has a potential to rise the warm air is less denser so it's going to to rise up the hill or up the valley okay yes let me show you um here i've had it grown by the way <laughs> let me remove it um and show you again okay okay so this is our valley okay this is up the valley there up the valley so this is our valley floor okay so it's during the day during the day you know that we have sunlight let me draw sun there we have sunlight during the day okay draw sun okay this is the sun and this is the incoming solar radiation to the earth surface making the earth surface warmer okay yes so the warm air is going to to rise okay it is going to rise causing these anapatic winds okay yes so that's how it goes so the very important stuff that you should understand here is that anapatic winds okay during the day number one Number two, anapatic winds are warm winds. And lastly, um, they go up the valley, the direction, the movement. As you can see, they go up, up the valley. Okay, as you can see, they go up the valley. Okay, yes, as I explained. Okay, so let's move to anticyclones, which is high pressure. So, anticyclones forms as a result of sinking air sinking air air movement is anti-clockwise the air movement of the anticyclones is is anti-clockwise as you can see they are anti-cyclones so the anti-cyclone divergent which means that diverging so the planetary winds on the area um that anticyclones are experienced the planetary winds there are diverging okay yes but i'm going to show you subsiding or sinking air in the south hemisphere for example we have south atlantic anticyclone or south atlantic high south indian high and kalari high so the south atlantic high you get it um you found it on on the atlantic ocean okay yes so that's the 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 the, the anticyclone that you find on the atlantic ocean the south indian high on the indian ocean which is on the east side of south africa and the kalahari in the interior of south africa so um yes so yes that's how it goes so the very important things that you must know about anticyclones that they are sinking eh okay um let me show you so for anticyclones that you must know these 
a sinking a okay sinking a downwards okay so like this sinking a okay they are going down or subsiding a okay why they are singing a it's because they are in the area or in the regions that have diverging winds the planetary winds are diverging there as you know that um, the anticyclone will receive them on the 30 degrees south and north latitudes okay yes so there on the 30 degrees south and north we have diverging air um let me try to draw okay okay so we have zero here let's say we have 30 here degrees north 30 degrees south here okay we have 30 degrees degrees south and we have zero degrees which is the it is at the equator and we have 30 degrees north 30 degrees not okay that's 30 guys okay that's 30 degrees oh let me rewrite it mm, 30 degrees we have 30 degrees okay yes so we have 30 degrees not so there there is diverging here okay in these areas um let me draw planetary winds that are there so diverging winds the easterlies that move that way okay and also the westerlies that move that way to the subpolar low pressure belt which is at 60 degrees um south and north okay yes so the very same thing that happens here the very same thing that will happen on the 30 degrees north okay yes um so this is this causes high pressure so diverging winds causes high pressure so here we're going to have high pressure which is going to cause the sinking air to the to the earth surface causing the anticyclone that's how it goes okay now let's move to aspect so the aspect is the direction in which a slope faces a slope can either face southwards or northwards okay yes so that's what expect is all about so more about um aspect this is whereby maybe let's say here in southern hemisphere we are in southern hemisphere below the equator this the north facing slope is the one that is receiving more sunlight and then the northern hemisphere the south facing slope is the one that is receiving more sunlight okay let me go and show you there okay i already wrote that let me remove it let me remove it okay just give me a few seconds to remove it okay so this is not an atmosphere okay yes above the equator and this is southern atmosphere below the equator mind you we are in southern atmosphere okay yes so this is northern hemisphere this is southern hemisphere okay so in northern hemisphere south facing slope okay is the one that is receiving more sunlight okay the side of the slopes that are facing southwards in northern hemisphere are the one that are receiving more sunlight in southern hemisphere the north facing slope is the one that is receiving more sunlight okay yes so in that way the side that is receiving more sunlight is the side that is going to to experience more human activity 
and other activities such as um, agricultural activities, um, building of infrastructure, um, buildings, yes, yes, buildings, um, housing and so on. Okay, people are going to choose the site that is, that is refusing, receiving sunlight. Okay, yes, that's how it goes. Um, yes, so let's move to back winds. So back winds, these are the hot, dry winds that blow from the from the interior of South Africa to to coastal areas. Okay, so these are the winds that we are experiencing in winter. Okay, these are the very hot, dry winds that blow from the interior of South Africa to coastal areas. Okay, how and why these winds are hot? Why these winds are dry? Why they blow from the interior of South Africa to the coastal low pressure or to the coastal areas? Okay, so this is the interior of South Africa okay and this is the coastal area okay let me so this is the coastal area okay this is the ocean okay this is the ocean yes so this is the ocean okay this is the coastal low pressure LP let me just write LP okay yes so in winter you know that we're experiencing high pressure and in the land there is calorie high which is which is dominant on the air on the ground on the earth surface so there will be sinking A causing high pressure okay causing the color eye to be dominant that sinking air when it's from the atmosphere upper atmosphere when it goes down to the earth surface it hits our dear particle with the lapse rate of one degrees celsius okay per 100 meters okay so in each and every 100 meters the air hits up with with one degree so it's plus one degrees in each and every one meter from from the higher atmosphere meaning that the air is going to be to be it's going to become warmer and warmer and when it arrives in the earth surface it's hot okay so it's going to move from the earth surface in the southern africa um from the interior move from the interior to to the coastal to the coastal areas okay so as it moves it's going to make the grass um, very very dry um, it's going to affect people because it's very hot wind okay yes it's very very hot and so on so the human beings are also affected it's also very very dry and and, and so that's how it goes for the back winds um, the climate change this is the long term changes to the global climate okay to the global climate resulting in unusual and extreme weather conditions and extreme or unusual weather conditions so the climate change um, also introduces you to to global warming okay so factors such as global warming because it has its own um, negative effects on on earth okay yes also in weather conditions of earth as well so the climate change this is what we are experiencing an extreme weather conditions than usual okay that's all about climate change okay so let's move to cyclone so a cyclone is a low pressure okay it's a low pressure system so it forms resu result of rising air so it is formed a result of rising air okay for instance just like a tropical cyclone or a mid latitude cyclone so a mid latitude cyclone this is by two emasses meet okay two emasses meet on 60 degrees south and north 
of the equator okay yes 60 degrees latitude so this is by these masses meet the tropical westerlies that are from 30 degrees um, south for instance meeting with with the polar easterlies so we have different masses here in terms of temperatures others are warmer and others are cold okay yes so just because of the difference in temperature of, the, of this air we have cold air and we have um, warm air so the cold air is denser than the warm air so the cold air is going to oblige to get underneath the warm air causing the warm air to rise okay so that's why it is a cyclone a middle cyclone in the side of um, tropical cyclone this is whereby the warm air the warm rising air that has high high moisture content from the warm oceans for instance um indian ocean okay yes or the warm mozambique current this is whereby it is going to to rise okay the high moisture content that is found on the on these warm oceans during summer is going to rise okay yes causing the cumulonimbus clouds big big clouds that are going to move from from east to west meaning that if they are moving from east to west they are moving beyond or they are moving to to the earth surface to the ground of africa causing these tropical cyclones and and, and. so the air movement of the cyclone is clockwise so the air movement of the cyclone is clockwise not just like an anticyclone so an anticyclone is anti-clockwise but for a cyclone it's clockwise so it's convergent meaning that it's inwards um it's convergent meaning that the planetary winds are converging coming towards to each other causing this low pressure okay yes rising mentioned which is caused by the convention in the southern hemisphere we have coastal low tropical cyclone mid latitude cyclone as well as i explained okay um yes i think okay so the only thing that i should maybe show you is that um the cyclone the reason why it's a low pressure the reason why it's caused by the rising air and so on i think you understand that but the reason why it's a low pressure this is whereby the planetary winds okay um let me just draw the earth there okay so um this is let's say this is 30 degrees this is 60 degrees south and this is 90 degrees south the polar region okay this is 90 degrees south this is 60 okay degrees south this is 30 degrees south but i'm not going to write other latitudes for for the northern hemisphere okay i'm just going to end there so this is zero degrees the height is at the equator so um for instance the mid latitude cyclones are formed on 60 degrees south but okay between 40 to 30 degrees latitudes okay yes so they form here this is by the westerlies that are from the 30 degrees south are going to meet the polar easterlies okay yes and this is converging this is converging the polar easterlies from the poles the very very cold and dry winds from the poles you know the poles it's surrounded by ice and so on that is very very cold okay so they are going to to meet here when when planetary winds are meeting they causes low pressure because the warm air is going to rise and cause a cyclone that's how it goes okay yes 
so yes so let's move to to the heat island so a heat island tends to buy higher temperatures in urban areas than the surrounding rural areas so urban heat island this is higher temperatures where in urban areas than in the surrounding rural areas so it happened heat island this is the heat that is being experienced around the cities okay around the urban areas why there are various factors that makes or affect or causes the urban heat island for instance the tall buildings dark buildings skyscrapers that absorb more sunlight that absorb more incoming solar radiation from the sun the, the low the low um, wind speed okay which is caused by the friction between the buildings you know the buildings in urban areas and cities are close to each other okay and they are huge they are dense okay yes so the air movement will be slower meaning that there will be more heat and so on because the air flow is slower and so on um the fuel vegetation lack of trees okay yes um low amount of trees that are being found and low amount of vegetation that is being found in, in these areas low water bodies there are no water or few water bodies or no water bodies at all in in these cities in these urban areas um the release of um cfc's chlorofluorocarbons yes from the cars from the air conditioners um, whether in cars or whether in in these buildings and so on there are many guys yes so there are many causes of heat island including the pollution as i said to you okay so there are many causes as i said that causes this heat island or this urban heat island yes by the way we did um previously some lessons more about um all of these uh concepts that we are talking about today yes you can revisit them if um if you think um you lack knowledge or maybe you want more knowledge about them yes okay so um okay let me go back to heat island okay to just show to show you how urban heat island um would be showed and so on so i have been heat island r is r stands for rural areas okay yes u stands for urban areas and the other r stands for rural areas so this is why it's going to be like this it's going to be like this so this is the temperature increasing in in urban areas decreasing when going or leaving the urban areas going to rural areas so this is the urban heat island okay it's going to be like this okay yes so this is the temperature on our y axis this is the temperature and this is the distance between rural and urban areas okay yes so meaning that here the high temperatures that are being experienced as i have explained okay low temperatures because in rural areas there there are a lot of trees few houses and and high water bodies content around the, the surface of rural areas and so on okay so this is the urban heat island um okay let's move to the invasion layer so the invasion layer this is the zone where sinking cold air meets the rising warm air a layer okay so this is the zone where cold air meets the rising warm air a layer of the atmosphere in which temperature increases with height yes layer of nursery where temperature increases with heights yes so an inversion layer 
This is what buy. Okay, a warm rising A. Okay, red stands for warm rising A. Okay, guys, so sorry. Let me cancel that. So this is warm rising A. Um, this is the warm rising A. And you know, the higher and cold, the colder it becomes. And we have um, cold sinking air. Okay, yes, because it's denser. Okay, you know, in order for the warm air to rise, there must be at least the underneath air that is denser to push this air to rise. Okay, which is cold air. Okay, yes. Also, there is domination of the cold air here that pushes this warm air to, to rise. So when this warm air rises, it is going to meet the other sinking air that is very, very cold and denser, meaning that this warm air is going to be trapped here. Okay? This warm air is going to be trapped here, causing an inversion layer. So, yes. So this air is going to be trapped here, causing this inversion layer. So this is the inversion layer, this one. Yes. You know, here, um, here, we have cold air. Let me use blue. We have C, cold air. We have cold air. And we have warm air. Okay, yes, which causes this inversion layer and so on. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I showed you um an inversion layer. Yes. So basically, normally we experience inversion layer in winter. This is by um. Either the South Atlantic High or South Atlantic Anticyclone or the Indian Anticyclone. South Indian Anticyclone is um, is preventing the warm air from the warm oceans to rise. Okay, yes, in the side of the South um, Indian Anticyclone. This is why the South Indian Anticyclone prevents okay the warm air from the warm ocean and rising causing the inversion layer okay yes and mind you it occurs in winter so we also have intertropical convergence zone the itcz so this is an area along the equator yes at zero degrees on the equator it's on the zero degrees equator okay that's the intertropical convergence zone that's a line of the equator that line of the equator is the itz intertropical convergence zone where the tropical easterlies from both hemispheres meet let me go and illustrate and show you the itz so we have Mm. All right, let me restart and draw the other one. That one was so bad, man. Hey. Okay, let me try. Okay. At least better. At least. Okay, so this is the ITZ. The equator why it's called the why it is called or given the name the it is the intertropical convergence so meaning that there is converging here or there is convergence okay from the winds that are from 30 degrees south and north of the equator both hemispheres this is 30 degrees 
south and this is 30 degrees north of the equator degrees okay yes 30 degrees north and 30 south okay both these emasses or these um, planetary winds are coming from the east side okay yes from the east okay the pole coming from the east okay east so sorry east side from the east side yes <laughs> so causing a low pressure there in the equator and the line of the equator that's why it's said to be as itcz okay in the tropical coverage so it's very very warm there there's a low pressure okay a very low pressure there because as you can see that there is convergence okay yes planetary winds are moving towards to each other moving closer to each other okay um let's move to catapatic winds so catapatic winds these are the cold winds that blow down a valley slope at night so catapatic winds i can say um it's an opposite of anapatic winds okay yes because anapatic winds are warm while catapatic winds are cold Anapatic winds goes up the valley while catapatic winds go down the valley and catapatic winds okay at night but anapatic winds okay during the day so catapatic winds how are they okay so this is uh, the valley and mind you in the illustration in the diagram they will use um, a moon okay to show this is night okay and stars okay this is a moon and stars okay and stars I'm not, I'm not going to write star i'm not going to draw stars in a proper way i can't guys yes so this is night okay yes so in the night you know that during the day the land was being was being transferred with heat from the sun okay yes during the day you know that so meaning that during the night the land is cooling due to terrestrial radiation and so on okay yes so the earth surface loses heat during the day so heats move upwards okay so heat move upwards the warm air will move upwards and the cold air starts to to go down to be dominant okay on the valley floor and this causes these catapatic winds during the night okay down the slope these catapatic winds so these are the catapatic winds so during the night the cold is the one that is dominant in the in the land okay yes just go down a little bit okay so we have polar easterlies so these are the winds that blow from the pole towards the subpolar low pressure okay which is 90 degrees to 60 degrees south and north of the equator okay so these are the polar easterlies so let me show an illustration Uh, we draw the world mm, let me use red let me use red or black to just draw this
okay so this is um, okay so this is a pole so this is the equator I'm just only going to show it southwards guys okay yes so this is 60 this is 30 degrees south this is 60 degrees south and this is um, 90 degrees these are poles okay yes so this is 90 90 degrees south okay so here we have 60 degrees south of the equator 30 degrees there was even no need to write 30 degrees and 0 degrees um, 0 degrees which is the equator okay so um, so here we have polar easterlies okay these are the polar easterlies these winds are coming from from the polar regions okay they originate from the, the polar regions and also we have westerlies okay which are partially warm coming from the warm areas okay which are coming from 30 degrees south of the equator at least they have warm air content in them okay so as you can see here they are converging okay they are converging at 60 degrees south of the equator they are converging meaning that that is going to be a low pressure system this is where mid latitude zones are formed and that is why it's said to be as subpolar low pressure belt okay it's subpolar low pressure belt low pressure belt okay it's not a high pressure belt because if it was a high pressure belt the winds were going to to diverge to each other like this diverge diverge causing a high pressure but if they are converging like this they are causing a low pressure and they will cause a cyclone okay as you can see here 60 degrees south so yes that's how it goes so those are there um yes so those are the polar easterlies okay so the polar easterlies winds that blow towards uh, the subpolar yeah yes so that's what um the definition was was saying yes so these are the polar easterlies these are the polar easterlies the blue ones polar easterlies that we are talking about they originate from the polar regions okay yes they are very cold and dense um, temperature inversion the temperature inversion um, this is why the temperature is increasing with height okay normally we know that the higher end goes the colder it becomes but now we're experiencing temperature inversion this is why the higher one goes the warmer it becomes in a normal situation we say the higher one goes the colder it becomes but now the higher one goes the warmer it becomes that's a temperature inversion for instance with an inversion layer temperature inversion is um this is why the inversion layer is formed because of the temperature inversion thermal belt as well okay yes so the temperature inversion for the temperature inversion this is by the warm rising air okay it's rising let me say um okay yes the warm rising air is going to rise when rising it's going to meet the cold air here yeah, that is sinking cold sinking air and underneath this warm air there is other cold air that is pushing it up to rise so this is the 
the ground of the earth's surface and there is someone here experiencing cold but if they fly or move upwards or up the hill to here it must be the iron cold the cold that becomes but now they're going to receive warm temperatures okay which is unusual or abnormal that's called temperature inversion okay okay um let's speak about um thermal belt so thermal belt this is a zone of warmer temperature above the valley floor thermal belt is caused by the temperature inversion this is the zone of of what of warmer temperature above the valley floor okay so um this is a boy okay let me use the same one here okay 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 let me wrap okay so this is what by the thermal belt okay this is the heel we draw using black so this is the up heel this is the valley okay yes the valley floor okay the temperature invasion is going to be here the thermal belt i mean as well as tem uh, temperature invasion yes so this is the thermal belt okay tb thermal belt tb going to just write tb this is the thermal belt okay this is the thermal belt okay meaning that this is the warm air in the thermal belt okay as you saw the definition says the zone of warmer temperature above the valley floor it was supposed to be at least this was supposed to be on the bottom of the of the valley floor but here we have your cold air that is that is that is dominant on the on the ground or oh, let me say let me just um just um shade to show that there is cold air here on the very floor so there is cold air this is cold this is cold air c a cold air okay yes and also the iron cold the color it becomes there is cold air also here cold air so when the warm air was was rising this is the same case as um the temperature inversion when the warm air was rising it met the cold air that was that was sinking okay met the the cold air that was sinking and this warm rising air was being pushed by this cold air okay so it got trapped here so it was trapped here okay yes causing the temperature inversion so most people and in your question paper questions like um why people or how people are going to be influenced by this um thermal belt so most people are going to to settle here to grow or to 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 build their houses on the thermal belt to build their houses here to build their houses here to settle here because they are warmer they are warmer temperatures more especially in winter okay yes because the valley floor is experiencing um frost the valley floor is very very cold during the nights and during the mornings and so on so people are going to settle on the upper on the upper slope or on the upper hill to experience the thermal belt the warm the warm um temperatures and so on so we have um tropical easterlies which are also known as trade winds 
so these are the winds that blow from the subtropical high pressure belts which are um, 30 degrees south and north of the equator towards the equatorial low pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt to the ITCZ so hmm, just to show you these um, tropical winds I mean um, easterly easterlies yes tropical easterlies let me wrap this and draw a new one okay zero degrees we're just going to end at 30 guys okay we're not going to move to 60 and 90 degrees south and north um this is 30 degrees south it's 30 degrees north of the equator okay so this is whereby these warm air or these easterly winds that origin from or originates from from 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south of the equator both hemispheres okay i'm moving towards the itz towards zero degrees okay causing a low pressure in the equator because they are they are converging they meet each other okay they're both easterlies so these are the um tropical easterlies okay yes so these are the winds that we are talking about here the tropical easterlies or trade winds okay lastly we have um westerlies so these are the winds that blow from the subtropical high pressure belts they blow from the subtropical high pressure belts to the subpolar low pressure belts to the subpolar low pressure belts so these are the winds that blow from 30 degrees south and north of the equator to 60 degrees uh, south and north of the equator meaning that if, if they blow from 30 degrees south and north of the equator means that they leave there a high pressure system or they leave there a high pressure or they cause high pressure belt so that's why 30 degrees south and north are a high pressure belt because westerlies are moving yes meaning that they are diverging with with the tropical easterlies that are moving to zero degrees okay yes so just to show you these um just to show you there's no space but let me just wrap here to show you these westerlies these are the one of the planetary winds okay westerlies okay i'm just going to show um again on the northern hemisphere on the southern hemisphere i mean yes not going to write for not uh, southern hemisphere for northern hemisphere i mean yes so we have 90 degrees south we have 60 degrees south we have 30 degrees south of the equator we have zero degrees the equator so 
the westerlies these are the westerlies that are leaving 30 degrees south okay as well and on the north okay guys yes on 30 degrees north also this happens okay yes these are the westerlies you can see they are westerlies they're coming from from the west west this is east this is south this is not so they are called depending on on their direction which direction they are from so these are the westerlies meeting with with these polar easterlies here okay with these polar easterlies here causing a low pressure there so here there is high pressure this high pressure belt 30 degrees high pressure belt 60 degrees a low pressure belt which is a subpolar um low pressure belt this is a low pressure belt zero degrees the it is that because they are converging air there yes so that's how it goes um that's a uh, that's the end of the lesson guys um please please don't forget to subscribe man please don't forget to subscribe uh, more content is coming um wish you a great day um productive and wonderful day um see you in the next following video uh cheers